Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Pray with me, please. Oh God, we feel so welcomed by you today. You brought us from the north, the south, the east, and the west, and you brought some people via live stream. As we gather, may your Holy Spirit open our hearts, our minds, and our doors so that we may be instruments of welcoming Jesus. We pray these things as we pray for our hearts to be open and for the words of my mouth be acceptable to you and glorifying to your holy name. Amen. I just read to you three verses from Matthew. And it's kind of an interesting concept because usually with Matthew, it's just longer reading. But just three verses. And in these three verses at the end of chapter 10, Jesus calls the disciples and sends them out into various cities to cure the sick raise the dead, and cleanse the lepers, as well as cast out demons. They are to do that traveling very light, with pretty much only the tunic on their backs. They are to receive no payments. They were told that they were being sent out like sheep in the midst of wolves, They that they would be Hated by all because of Jesus' name. I don't know about you, but to me, all these sayings sound like the disciples are sent on some sort of a mission impossible. Yet, we also find promising and caring words such as, do not fear. Those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are, are two sparrows not sold for a penny, yet none of them will fall to the ground apart from you, from your father, and even the hairs of your head will be counted. So do not be afraid, you are of more value than many sparrows. The disciples are, di are commissioned by Jesus and telling them to go and know that whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent you. And then there are two other verses. But we need to realize that in these three short verses, there's a whole lot of information to unpack. And I'm going to dwell with the first verse only. Because we read these three verses, and it's just so easy to think that we understand them. It is so easy to just gloss over them. Of course, it is a given. We are to be the church that's hospitable. I knew one church that had a sign over the fellowship hall that said, we are the friendly church. Okay? <laughs> it's a given. And I love it that they had it. It's a reminder that we are to be hospitable. We are not only hospitable, though, here at the UMCTO. We have programs that... Uh, we go out of our way to give food and provide medical assistance and tutoring for the children. That's a lot of hospitality, won't you say? Do I hear an amen here? I think we are being very hospitable. 
and we provide all the things to the community. Yes, we are the church. And you know what else? We don't only provide water. Did you notice that we provide coffee during our fellowship time? And not just coffee. Many a times we get some really good cookies and some sweets. I would say we are being hospitable. So these verses, in a way, I feel like we normally would call it preaching to the choir. I know choir is on the hi hiatus, but it's like preaching to the choir. What else is new here? Of course, we are to be hospitable. We are to provide water, et cetera, et cetera. It is easy for us to check each box and feel like we have accomplished what God has called us to be and to do. But friends, when you look at this message, the, the, the message that Jesus is giving carefully, you will notice that the message is not that simple. The instructions he gives his disciples are not about extending welcome. Let me repeat that. It is not about the disciples extending welcome. The instruction is because so many times we think that we are called to be hospitable. And, and so many of the sermons on this particular passage I've heard were having to do with uh, being ho the hospitality and being the welcoming committee. But the text shows us these passages are about receiving welcome. Let me say that again. It is about receiving welcome. They're about what it would be like for followers of Jesus to accept welcome in Jesus' name. It is about the challenges and rewards um, to others who welcome those who represent Jesus, who in turn is re welcoming, representing God. I hope you see the huge way of this statement. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Author David, Debbie Thomas wrote that in this one sentence, what Jesus is teaching us is that, quote, we mirror Jesus whether we plan it or not. She claims this is a staggering claim. What would happen if you took it seriously or even literally? How will our behaviors and attitudes change if we behaved and believed that other people see Jesus every time they look at us? What would happen to the church and the world if we operated on the assumption that Jesus is visible and through us, every moment, every interaction, in every relationship, encounter, conversation, and conflict, Jesus is seen. What sense of burden or obligation will we feel in our homes, in our marriages, in our workplaces, and our extended families? Will we tread more lightly on the earth, speak less, and listen more, reconsider grudges and grievances, choose our words with greater care, examine our motivations more closely? These are significant questions that ended the quote. I really think that these are really significant questions because when Jesus commissioned his disciples, they were going out into the cities and towns representing their teacher, Jesus. These are questions that we should consider for followers of Jesus the Christ. We are representing Jesus and in essence, God who sent his son. The Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 5.20, that as Christian believers, we are to be Christ's ambassadors. He wrote, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as through God, we're making his appeal through us. 
For early Christian readers, an ambassador was someone who represented one state or land to another. Not that different from what we understand as ambassadors being representing the nation that they were sent to represent. They were official representatives of the one who sent them and were therefore to be treated with the utmost respect. It was a well-known title, one that carried a great deal of respect and dignity and that warranted a great deal of, uh, of, of decorum on the part of the ambassador as well. He or she were not only to receive the respect, but that respect was to be shared and given by the ambassadors themselves. By ambassadors of Christ, Paul meant that Christians should see themselves as representative of God and were to behave accordingly. They had an important job to do to showcase Christ and deliver his message to those who did not know him as well. Folks, we have a big responsibility. Someone once said that for many who do not know Jesus, you and I will be the only chance of welcoming Jesus in their lives. For many in the world, you and I will be the only things, persons that they will see representing Christ. On the one hand, it's good. But I also cringe whenever I hear this word spoken by Mahatma, Mahatma, Mahatma Gandhi. He said, I like your Christ. I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. That hurts because I know it speaks to me as well. But on the other hand, it is a good thing because what he is saying is that certain things that he expects from those who represent Christ, that's a good thing. That's a good and hopeful thing because it makes us know that there are things that Mahatma Gandhi was looking for. We are to live a life of receiving welcome and hospitality so that others will be welcoming the Jesus we represent. I want to expand some more questions from Debbie, Debbie Thomas's questions. Oh, what would happen, friends, if we took this literally and this message seriously? What would happen if we were to wake up each and every morning, and as we look ourselves in the mirror, we remind ourselves as ambassadors of God representing Christ in the world. What will happen when we consciously realize that in every action, word, and deed, we are, ex we are an extension of Jesus? Will the next person we interact be welcoming Jesus based on this? Will we interact with family and friends with the sense of burden and obligation that it is up to us that others will welcome Jesus? Our United Methodist Church, we have a motto that says open hearts, open minds, an open door. And then today we will be having communion. And do you know what that's called in the United Methodist Church? I hear somebody mouthing it. That's right. Open table. How beautiful is that? Not only open doors, open hearts, open minds, but it's an open table. And the reason I think that we need to be reminded of that again. Yes, we can be the church that gives the things that people need in the world. Food, clothing, medical care, water, tutoring, all things that we do. And I'm so amazed that UMCTO and the volunteers and all the other services that come to provide those needs. But it doesn't stop there, my friends. We step out of these doors. 
people see us, whether we wear a cross on our necks or not, does not matter. Somebody had said to me that if we have to say to people that we are Christians, then something is wrong. We have to show it, not just say it. And by doing that, it is what we do, meaning that we receive the welcome from others so that they may welcome the Christ that we represent. Not an easy task. That's why we need to look into the mirror time and time again. Every time we fault, every time we slip back, every time we say the words that we wish we could have taken it back, every time that we did not do something that was supposed to be done. It's not all about I should, but there are a lot of times when we should be able to say, I shouldn't have done that. We are representative of the one that calls us to go into the world to show Jesus through us, by us, from us, and because of us, others will be receiving Jesus. Go into the world with gratitude, friends, knowing that God believes in us. What an amazing thing that is that God believes in us. He believes that we will go and be the representatives of Jesus so that others will be welcoming Jesus in their lives. Go this week and the weeks to come always remembering that we have a task at hand to be welcomed by others as they see Christ in us. Amen.